Hello, welcome and a very good evening to a short video that one of my viewers sort of initiated. He watched my previous video on the Roland Soundbrush, which is an interesting device, so go check it out. I will put a link up here and down in the video description. Uh, long story short, the Soundbrush is a companion to the Sound Canvas. The Sound Canvas is basically a synthesizer or a music module that you can hook up to a keyboard or to your PC to um, produce synthesized sounds. It is the successor to the Roland MT32, which you see down here. And both of these devices were very well supported by games from the mid 80s for the MT32 to the mid to eight nineties, um, both in DOS, but also in Windows, Windows 95 games, when they were still using MIDI as their main means of sound production, not like CDs or something like that, CD audio and similar things. Anyway, the sound brush is a companion as it allows you to insert a disc, a floppy disc, and uh, record or play back MIDI music on onto a floppy basically or from a floppy depending on what you're doing basically you could hook up your keyboard record your play back uh, or whatever you played and uh, play it back at a later time which is a nice thing you didn't need a computer uh, especially good for musicians who are not well versed in computers and also for example laptops were not a thing back then or very expensive or not very capable. So you could just take your small synth and the sound brush and record things in whatever studio you went to basically and then have everything on a floppy. So the viewer asked if it was possible to record on these things from a PC basically. Probably he meant a retro PC. Uh, these devices are all hooked up to my 486DX33 so a pretty standard 90s machine. Uh, my board is actually from I think around 1990 or 1991 but most people would have had a DX33 at some later time. Anyway, um, we're gonna try it with this disc here and I'm taking this disc instead of like uh, one of the regular high density discs. Um, you can see that uh, the high density discs have an extra hole in here, which marks them as high density, whereas this one is a double density disc, uh, which is missing the hole. Also says MF2DD, which means double density. So it um, takes up to 720 kilobytes. Why do I do this? The disc drive in here in the Soundbrush is actually only a double density drive. While I noticed that it does work with high density discs, once it has formatted them to 700, 20 kilobytes instead of 1.4 megabytes. Um, I can't read the disks in a high density disk drive, only the Roland can still read that, which is due to the fact that I think the magnetic media on double density are slightly different than on high density. Yeah, so uh, basically the floppy drive in here can't write the high density disks correctly. So actually, uh, um, there are some files on here which I want to delete. So we have to hold down the clear button, insert the disk, and then it says sir, which means I don't know what, but pressing down the record button will format the disk, which is this symbol here and the, the spinning motion of the two other LEDs. And this takes a couple of seconds, but very quickly, this disk will be initialized with 720 kilobytes. And that, then it will be ready to record, actually. So everything is set up now. Um, we have the disk inserted and we have started up the installation program for Freddy Farkas by Sierra. There's one reason for that, because it supports general MIDI instead of only the MT32, as many previous games did. So we will get correct sound on the sound canvas. And uh, the Lucasfilm games that support General MIDI actually uh, send MIDI messages way too fast for the sound brush, it seems. It always says MIDI buffer full. Um, I'm not sure why that happens, if it's because I have a fast 486 or if they're sending weird commands that a Roland sound brush can't interpret. The sound canvas and the MT32 are fine with that. They will function just 
fine, basically. But um, I figured out only the Sierra games will play nicely with the Soundbrush. There's also other things like the Windows 3.1 media player, which plays back Canyon Mid dot uh, fine and uh, similar things. But let's just uh, go with this here um, and be fine. So we accept all the choices, ignore the mornings here, and then we will start the program. But before, oh, that was wrong. And then we'll start the program. But before we'll do that, we will hit the pause and the record button at the same time. So pause will be on now and the record will be uh, glowing. And once you start the program and the first MIDI note is coming, it will start record. Which you can see the pause light turned off. Now record and play are lighting up. And you can hear and see that this actually is now recording. So, what do we do now? I've fig f fired up uh, Windows here to see if we can pull off the data from this floppy and read it and play it back with the Windows Media Player, actually. So we will reject the disk here, and it should contain one MIDI file now with a little bit of the intro of Freddy Farkas. Um, and I'm going to go in the file manager onto floppy disk A, and there we have it. We have the MIDI file here. Let's see if it's correctly associated, if this actually works. Um, does it do anything? I think not exactly. Oh yes, now it works. Just had to hit enter correctly. And uh, yeah, at least it loaded it. Uh, now let's try and see if it will play on the SC55 if we hit the play button. And even the gunshot was recorded, which is actually a, a sound effect in the MIDI library, I guess. And as you can hear, it's loud and clear. And I would say that it's actually a success, I would say. Let's see what the file size is. It's um, a mere, not even five kilobytes, 5.7, 4.7 kilobytes for roughly um, 33 seconds of music which I think is fine. Um, actually, now you've seen it, this is the buffer full error message, which I don't know, you can probably see it in the video when it triggered at some point when I hit something in the media player. So that is the drawback basically. You can record video game music using the sound brush, but it's not perfect. It's uh, It was meant to be used for recording keyboard sessions and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, we have some limited success, it works. Uh, it's probably easier to hook up a USB MIDI adapter or something to your modern PC and record using that, including all the SysX events for the MT32 and stuff like that. Um, but it's doable. In the next section, we will have a very quick look how you have to wire this thing up in the way that I'm using it for recording and to be able to play back stuff on the PC. Um, if you want to have the possibility to play back from both the PC and uh, the uh, sound brush at the same time to the same device, it gets a bit more complicated Then we need a cable going here to the uh, second MIDI import on the front. And a very quick look here uh, at the back. As you can see, the uh, MIDI input to the sound canvas is coming from the PC. This is the median. And uh, the uh, signal goes right out through the MIDI through port, uh, which is what we want, because we want both the sound canvas as well as the sound brush to receive the MIDI messages. So we're not using the MIDI out here. And that goes into, via a very short MIDI cable, to the in port on the sound brush actually. And this way we can uh, record from the PC uh, very easily. The sound canvas doesn't even have to be turned on, I 
Oh no, it has to be turned on, otherwise the through port will not work. But you can mute it if you want, and it should still uh, record properly up here. Playing back would require us to uh, take the uh, MIDI cable that uh, is coming from the PC and put that onto the uh, MIDI out up here, basically. Or if you want to uh, play back directly to the to this device, uh, we would have to unplug this, of course, and take the uh, MIDI output from here, from up here, and uh, wire it to the MIDI in on the sound canvas. So this way we can just directly play from the floppy and uh, without the PC being on, actually. So that was my short video about the recording from and to the soundbrush. And um, yeah, if you like this, share, like and subscribe as usual. You can support me via Patreon, Ko-Fi, etc. But if you don't, that's just fine as well. Leave a comment and uh, hope to see you soon. And uh, let's try and see if that playback actually works. So in goes the disc and yeah, there it is. Let's hit play.